Hello and welcome to the program. 70 years ago, over 200,000 Crimean Tatars suffered a terrible fate when on May 18, 1944, Stalin ordered the forced deportation of Crimean Tatars. To discuss this topic and others, we're joined today by Yana Primachenko. She is a senior research fellow of the National Academy of Science of Ukraine, Institute of History of Ukraine. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hi. So first, a uh, bit of a reminder for, for our viewers. This, this genocide of uh, Crimean Tatar people was orchestrated by, by Soviet dictator uh, Joseph Stalin. Can you explain a little bit the, the context and the historical context around it? After the uh, Crimea Peninsula was liberated uh, by Soviet army from the Nazi occupation, uh, Stalin signed the decree, which is called about Crimean Tatar, and that was the start of the uh, campaign of deportation. Uh, the main idea was to uh, punish uh, Crimean Tatar for so-called uh, collaborationism. Mm -hmm. But actually it's not true, because uh, the real reason was uh, to uh, uh, preparation for the future war. And uh, Stalin deported uh, uh, Crimean Tatar and other uh, small people such as uh, Chechens, uh, Balkarians, uh, Ingush, uh, because he wanted to save this territory uh, and he uh, supposed that uh, maybe in a year or so there will be a, a new war with uh, Turkey. Mm -hmm. So, and these people who was also Islamic and who has a very close connection with uh, Turkey, uh, historical connections, uh, so uh, he believed uh, that uh, they could uh, collaborate and could be an obstacle in this war. So they were, would you say they were targeted on, on, on the basis of, of religious reason, of ethnical reason, or, or on the basis of geopolitical reason also? Or is it, is it there a, was um, a yeah. complex reason, mm -hmm. but uh, the main reason, as it was put it in uh, Soviet propaganda, that uh, Crimean Tatar was a traitor nation. Actually, it's not true, because uh, among the Crimean Tatar, uh, the collaboration was very low. And uh, during the deportation, only uh, 6,000 uh, people were accused of collaboration and sent uh, to Gulag. So, but, but yeah, this idea of, of traitor to the nation was often used uh, by, by the Soviet regime uh, at, at the time. Yes, uh, it was an uh, instrument or tool to, mm -hmm. uh, de to uh, <clears throat> justify the deportation. Actually, uh, Stalin wants to create a... Um, uh, ethnic homogeneous strip uh, across the uh, western and uh, thousand borders of Soviet Union. And um, so, after the deportation, what, what has changed in the peninsula after this deportation? Did it, what, what kind of impact this did it have? This deportation had? changed the ethnic landscape of the peninsula, and uh, new settlers, settlers from Russia and Ukraine were sent to Crimea. And uh, Crimean Tatars uh, were sent to uh, eastern regions of Soviet Union and uh, they were prohibited uh, uh, to come back to Crimea until uh, the 1956, but even after that they couldn't uh, return to their home. Uh, they returned to their home only uh, when Ukraine gains independence. Now, uh, the, there is this, this idea uh, behind it, because they were targeted uh, for their ethnicity and for numerous reasons, that uh, people talk about a genocide. Would you agree with, with, with that statement? What, what's, your, what's your stance on that? Uh, well, uh, that's a very complex question, because uh, the uh, conception of genocide was a sense of compromise between uh, big states. And uh, some points were... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, took away by the Soviet Union, by the other powers who uh, didn't want uh, to be accused in the uh, genocide. So uh, nowadays it's uh, quite difficult to uh, prove that it was genocide, but actually it was a crime against humanity and uh, in 2015, uh, Ukrainian parliament recognized the genocide of Crimean Tatars. And as far as I know, uh, now we are working to uh, get the um, international recognition of this deportation as a genocide of Crimean Tatars. So, so, so how do you do that? Do you, do you appeal to certain courts? Do you, how, what is the process for mm, that? I think uh, that now is the period when we uh, should uh, find some evidence and uh, the evidence is vivid here because uh, we have this decree which uh, shows that there was the intention to deport the whole uh, nation mm -hmm. 
And uh, with uh, these uh, proofs and uh, these documents, uh, we could uh, come to the international community and ask them to recognize uh, uh, this as genocide. Now, uh, we talked about the, the, the reshaping, the uh, ethnic reshaping, the uh, demographic, let's say, reshaping of, of uh, Crimea. It is more or less happening uh, today, too. And how does it resonate with today's situation, this? this? Today's situation for Crimean Tatars is very complicated because after the uh, occupation and illegal annexation of Crimea, uh, they uh, felt threat from the Russian authority. As far as I know, uh, 11 of 12 uh, Crimean Tatar media in Crimea was banned, was banned. and uh, actually um, some uh, Crimean Tatar political activists now in prison. Among them is also Ulmi Umero, mm -hmm. is the uh, deputy of uh, Midlis of Crimean Tatars. It's a parliament of uh, Crimean Tatars people. And uh, some leaders of Crimean Tatar people such as Rafat Chubarov and uh, Mustafa Jamilov uh, couldn't uh, visit. Uh, to the Crimea Peninsula now. Uh, I think that now uh, Russian authority try to uh, uh, create some uh, maybe um, atmosphere of fear in Crimea, for, for Crimea Tatars. Just uh, they stop their uh, fight for their, for their mm. rights. So they're pushing them, uh, they, they, instead of maybe of deporting them, they're just pushing them away with this coercitive uh, atmosphere, is what you're saying? I, I think there are uh, very um, complicated uh, historical uh, relationships between Russians and Crimean Tatars. And uh, Russian authority used this very complicated history just to uh, threaten uh, Crimean Tatars now. And uh, as far as I know, they uh, in such a way try to uh, uh, oust the Crimean Tatar people from uh, uh, Crimea Peninsula because uh, mm -hmm. we have a lot of uh, refugees in uh, <coughs> eternal displaced persons who now live in Ukraine and some go to Tokyo. Uh, so, just uh, just just for the viewers to understand, technically, do Crimean are, are Crimean Tatars considered as, as IDPs or refugees? Uh, as far as I know, now they are considered as uh, inner displaced persons, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a um, Low term, uh, <laughs> I couldn't uh, comment this because I'm a historian. Uh, now, to, and to, to, to conclude uh, this interview, what, uh, what measures should be taken, according to you and to the historian, uh, to, to make the World Committee more aware of this tragedy, I mean, this past tragedy, and this what tragedy which is happening now? Uh, we should talk about this situation on the international area and we should uh, uh, try to uh, get the international recognition of the genocide of Crimean Tatar. I think it could be uh, helpful in the uh, future uh, struggle for uh, returning uh, Crimea Peninsula to Ukraine. So you would say it's a fundamental... <clears throat> This recognition of the genocide is a fundamental step into into this, this, this. I think it's fundamental step for Crimean Tatar, especially now, because their situation is very difficult. They uh, could uh, uh, they can uh, lose uh, their uh, homeland again. Mm -hmm. That's very painful situation uh, for these people. Well, thank you for joining us today to talk about this, uh, this tragedy. It was a pleasure to have you in the studio. Uh, that was Yana Primashenko. She's a senior research fellow of the National Academy of Science and Institute of History of Ukraine. Thank you for watching the program and stay tuned for the rest.